I just feel like we can pledge to. Oh, no. <laughs> We're waiting for Brian and uh, Dennis. I'm in, I'm, so I'm in. I've dialed in. It's easy enough hey, to Brian. dial in. You guys, you guys recognize. I figure we're safe enough to assume that you recognize my heavy Queen's accent and know it's me without without seeing my face. Hello, Thomas. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Hey, Brian. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Good afternoon, Chief. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. How about yourself and your family? Uh, we're hanging in there. Thank you. Um, um, and thanks for the great job you guys are doing. Yep. The members are doing a great job. Yeah, I agree. Great. We all agree. And everyone's holding up, Chief? Yeah, it's very stressful times. The guys are afraid they're going to get sick and bring it home to their family. So you can imagine the stress that comes with that. But, you know, everybody's coming to work and doing their job. That's great. And I've, I've been reading how uh, they're talking about, I think, Governor Cuomo, uh, kind of like combat pay in recognition for their efforts. I, I read articles about that. I just don't know how they're going to pay for it. And, you know, I don't know if it'll get approved. I mean, I think the guys deserve it. But, you know, there's also the thought that, you know, they're firefighters and what they do is inherently dangerous to begin with. So, um, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. They've been breaking their butt. So according to mine, we have uh, eight people here, or nine. On my laptop, it shows 14 people are in, but I'm in signed in twice because I'm on my speakerphone and also my laptop, so I don't know how many other people are doubled up. Folks, yeah. For some reason, yeah. the microphone was not uh, doing what it was supposed to do. Okay, the screen is not justifying correctly, which is weird. The dial-in numbers are kind of taking over the screen. Are you guys seeing the same thing? Uh, yeah, yeah. I see. I see. I see you, Dennis. Yeah, but the dial-in numbers are kind of taking over the screen when people dial in. Like, um, it's just not us and Jamie. It's uh, the dial-ins are taking some of the screen. Yeah, I'm I see sure. that too. Well, thanks for that. Hello, Jamie. Hello. The setting. Hello. The setting. We're fixing that now. There we Hi, go. Hi, Jamie. Hi. Okay. So I changed the setting so we should only see the people who are in video. I see whoever's talking. Okay. Um, I'm seeing everybody in a multiple grid, but I'm also seeing people who are dialing in. Okay, you want to start the meeting if everybody can hear? You can not worry about the uh, quality. Absolutely. Is Stu here? Yeah, Stu's here. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Okay. Should we do a roll call to make sure we know everybody's here? 
before we start? Mr. Keating here? I'm present. Okay, I'm not seeing you, so I guess you're on a, a dialing. I called in, I dialed in. Okay, cool, that's good. Um, so, okay, so I see Paul, myself, Jamie, uh, Chief, and uh, Tom. So it looks like we have everybody. So you want to do some kind of pledge of allegiance to the flag? Sure. Yeah, I brought one with you. No, Tom, you can hold the flag. We know where you are on the left-hand side. The pledge of allegiance to the flag. To the public, to the one nation, on the ground, individual. Okay, so let's call the meeting to order and have the motion for the meeting to order. Okay, I'll make a motion to call the meeting order. Do I get a second? Second. And who's the second? Tom Roach. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so this is going to be mostly all a public meeting, obviously. So, um, I prepared just some short notes about the meeting. Uh, I don't know how the audio is going to sound. So I'm going to abbreviate my notes because I think the audio is going to be pretty lousy. But um, as we know, it's been a really challenging time. It's been a horrible time. Our world has been turned upside down in 50 days. And I think we owe um, the, the membership and the, the, the chief and the, our firefighters and all the first responders deserve the highest praise for the effort during the last six weeks. We need to recognize the outstanding selfless dedication of members of East Chester Volunteer Ambulance Corps, otherwise known as EVAC, the paramedics, the EMTs, the drivers, and all our East Chester firefighters that have responded 24 7. All have been working very closely with the three police departments to provide world-class emergency services during the, this pandemic. This relation between the agencies was forced over many years and truly a benefit to everyone during extreme times. In early March, representatives of the agencies met with hospital officials to set up protocols at the early stages of the pandemic. The chief can explain that meeting in greater detail. Um, but these are really horrible, terrible times. And I think we're, you know, everybody's doing the best they can and, and it is what it is. Uh, the chief has been working seven days a week with long hours and nights to navigate through the hazardous and perilous uncharted waters. Um, it might be better if some people might, I don't know. Um, this relationship between the agencies, no, I already bought that part. Um, And with outstanding, the chief's work and dedication has had outstanding results. The risk mitigation uh, of disease transfer for the membership has been non-existent to this point. Um, so he's done an extremely good job. We have four tour captains or tour commanders, Rick Dempsey, Bruce Shazo, Phil Pinto, Bruce Calby, all have years of service. They've all been doing these medical runs for a long time. They've been meticulously following infectious disease mitigation protocol to protect the community and the members. We should thank them. It's really helpful to have four very seasoned captains out there right now because those guys know what they're doing and they, they, they've proven it. Uh, we, also, we should also thank uh, the chief along with nine, local 915 executive board. The attendance over this last six weeks has been outstanding. The membership the members that have been out or dealing with long-term illnesses or corrective surgery that they're waiting on if they can't get because of the pandemic. But overall, the membership attendance and willingness to come in in difficult times should be commended. They've been, they've been excellent. And the meeting we're having today is being hosted on uh, Google Suites using Google, um, Google Meeting App. And we should think this was set up um, Google Suites we started getting in 2012, thanks to Jerry Napolitano, and uh, we wish Jerry well. So that's my just recap. And right now, I wouldn't mind having the chief give his chief report. And thank you, Chief, for your hours and your effort. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, I'll give my report for 2020. <clears throat> The coronavirus 
COVID-19 responses have continued to keep the members very busy, and all members and officers have done an outstanding job. Um, as the PPE, personal protective equipment, has been harder to obtain um, from the Westchester County Office of Emergency Management as their supplies have dwindled, um, we are probably going to have to start reusing some of our DuPont high chem suits. Um, we decon them on the scene, and at this point, we've been uh, discarding them. Um, but seeing how it's harder and harder to get uh, resupplied, and also that this doesn't appear to be going away anytime soon, when we decon the suits, we're going to bring them back to the firehouse uh, in closed bags, and we're going to start um, using our ozone machine that was donated by the Generoso Pope Foundation and David Pope. Um, and we're going to, other than cleaning them with bleach, soap, and water at the scene, we're going to put them through an ozone treatment so that we can reuse them uh, several times. Uh, so that should help with some of the uh, PPE issues. Also, uh, East Chester, town of East Chester has gotten some supplies that they're willing to share with us. Um, and I've been in touch with... Um, one of the police officers to uh, coordinate to get some of their supplies of masks and gowns as well. Um, <clears throat> numerous special orders have been issued in response to COVID-19. Uh, the first one was uh, instructing members reporting for duty with symptoms, uh, not to come to work, obviously, but if they develop system symptoms while they're at work and um, if they're exposed to somebody with symptoms, uh, the protocols uh, the second order was the cessation of gym equipment use due to COVID-19. That is a temporary order. Um, the third order we put out that I put out was uh, restricted access to all firehouses except on-duty personnel or official business. Uh, only emergency contractors can come in. Um, yesterday or uh, a couple days ago, we had a broken pipe at the Bronxville firehouse that was uh, the pipe broke, it was leaking through the kitchen from under the sink and was pouring down onto all the electrical panels in the basement. So obviously we had to have plumbers come in. Uh, we isolated uh, and shut down the water, um, but we had to have plumbers and electricians come in to make sure everything was safe and to get the water back on. Um, so emergency repairs are still going on, but everybody's keeping their distance and we take the temperatures of the vendors before they enter the firehouse to make sure they don't have fevers. Um, also change the mutual aid response. Normally we go sit in the firehouses at the mutual aid companies. Uh, we're no longer going inside the firehouse. We're waiting outside on the ramp or, you know, if, if it's cool outside, the members are just sitting in the fire trucks. Um, we're doing a maximum of a three hour standby if we're at the firehouse doing coverage. Um, after three hours, the members are request are instructed to get relief through county control and have the next mutual aid companies come in to relieve us. Um, again, that's to avoid going into somebody else's firehouse and spreading COVID-19 or possibly uh, contracting it. Um, there was another one put out uh, instructing members returning to work following COVID-19 infection or symptoms. And another one that's going to come out today is instructing members of the new um, emergency author, uh, order from uh, Governor Cuomo, uh, executive order on wearing of simple face masks when out in public uh, for non-emergencies or emergency response. Uh, if we're on a EMS call or a fire call, we may wear the N95 mask, but if we're simply outside the firehouse and have to deal with the public, we're wearing a simple face mask. Um, so that'll be coming out today to instruct the guys to comply with the governor's executive order. Uh, maintenance mechanic Tim Dalton has been working on several projects. He's doing painting here at headquarters. Um, just to mention, when that water pipe did break, we had to shut the electric at Station 3, um, and we uh, moved the engine to Tuckahoe for the night. The next day, a licensed electrician came in and checked all the uh, electrical circuits, and everything was found to be usable, and so we re-energized the panels, and the uh, members went back to the Bronxville Firehouse. Um, we've been having a uh, citywide of Westchester, a professional uh, cleanup company come in and electrically disinfect each firehouse and apparatus every Friday. Um, we're continuing with that. And as I mentioned before, uh, the Generoso Pope Foundation was kind enough to donate a ozone generator to the fire department, the three police departments, or I think two of the three, and also to um, EVAC. Um, so we've been using those to do the interiors of the cabs, the uh, offices, 
and the firehouse uh, sleeping quarters. Um, so that's been a very uh, useful uh, donation. We'd like to thank uh, them very much for that donation. Uh, vehicle maintenance continues through the use of outside vendors. Um, we're not having them come down unless it's an emergency. If there's a tail light out or something, uh, we'll see if Tim can fix it. Um, only if there's uh, something uh, safety-wise or more urgent will we have Ruscon come down or Firematic to work on the uh, fire truck. Um, the new, speaking of the fire trucks, a new Pierce Ladder 16 has begun production. Uh, two weeks ago, and we've been getting weekly progress photos that, that I forward to the board on every Friday. Um, so that's moving along nicely. Uh, the delivery time is expected in late July or August, and uh, it would take about a month to install the radios and all the tool mounting. So we should be getting that fire truck in service in September. Um, obviously, Chester Heights will not be uh, ready by then, uh, so it's probably most likely going to run out of the shop um, for whatever time it takes so we have a firehouse that uh, can fit the ladder truck. Um, fire prevention and code enforcement activities continue with numerous plan reviews and inspections. Um, they are still doing inspections of exterior oil, oil tanks and exterior solar panels, um, practicing social distancing and uh, wearing masks and uh, staying, you know, staying away from uh, people's houses. Um, currently, three members are out on long-term absence, and one member continues to work on restricted duty. And members, when they do call in sick, they're directed to communicate with Dr. Goyle with absent, just so there's some contact with the department physician. Um, I've been working with Assemblywoman, uh, New York Assemblywoman Amy Paulin's office on obtaining a SAM grant, as suggested by Commissioner Roche. Um, we're following up with that, um, but the people that I've spoken to um, have said that that's more of a facilities grant. Um, you can possibly get the fire truck in, but it's not definite. Um, so they recommended um, when I mentioned that the station four floor was being renovated and replaced, they said that would be a much better project as it would be more likely to get approved um, than the fire truck that we're having built right now. Um, <clears throat> And she, they also mentioned, the uh, staffer I was working with mentioned that these grants can take one to two years uh, to come through. So that's why it's a reimbursement grant. Um, it's not for things that we bought in the past. It's stuff for that we're doing right now, um, but we're not going to see the money for up to two years. So that's the reimbursement part. And we also have to demonstrate that we can pay for these things just in case we don't get approved. Um, I'm also putting in for FEMA grants, uh, coordinating with Senator, U.S. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand's office for costs and supplies associated with COVID-19. Uh, Lieutenant Stuffel is going to assist on the grants, um, and we may be able to get uh, reimbursed uh, some salaries that were caused by members being out on sick leave due to uh, having COVID-19, and if there were overtime costs related to that, we may be able to get reimbursed for that. So we're going to research that and put in an application and see if we can get that approved. Um, as the agenda mentioned, I have a few things I would ask for the board to consider to approve purchases of. Um, the washers and dryers have, have been ordered as requested last month as they were approved, um, but they have not been delivered yet. Um, and the pricing for plumbing and electrical work has been presented to the board, but Tim was not able to get the third uh, quote for the electrical for the washers uh, from Crest Electric. Uh, the person that does the quotes was not available today. So if you want to put that on pause for a month, um, the only thing is sometimes the quotes expire. Sometimes they only have a 30-day uh, life, and then we'd have to get them requoted. But if the board wants to put that off, we can put that off. Um, and, and wait for that uh, full quote. So we have three full quotes. Um, the generator annual maintenance service contract has been forwarded to the board. That's just once a year normal service. They check the coolant. They check the oil in laboratories to make sure that they're proper. Um, they do change the oil and filters and check the generators, make sure everything's running properly. They only change the coolant if the laboratory says that it is degraded to the point where it's not going to work properly. So the coolant is uh, a possible replacement if as necessary. Um, so that I would ask the board to approve that. Um, it's been the same price, I think, since 2017. Uh, so they have not added any increase on that contract. Um, the 
technological upgrades. Um, I had requested for us to get tablets and phones upgraded. There are six department telephones issued to the members, um, myself, the captains, the two lieutenants, and two members in fire prevention um, have phones. Um, so the, um, the cell phone uh, company I would like to go to would, is one that has a first responder network. So that's Verizon and AT&T both have first responder networks. The uh, AT&T FirstNet wireless network um, was cheaper or the monthly costs were the same for the phones. The monthly costs for the tablets were cheaper on the AT&T. And the cost of the tablets was about $150 a piece. Um, and I would like to get a tablet for each of the fire trucks, one for the captain's car and one for my car. Um, so that would be eight. We're not getting them for the out-of-service rigs, the reserve rigs. I would not request for, uh, only for the in-service, four engines, two ladders, the captain's car and my car. So it would be eight tablets. Um, the board had all the information except the cost of the tablets uh, last month's meeting. Um, the prices have not changed on the monthly fees, which are $34.99 for the tablets and thir uh, $39.99 for the phones, uh, unlimited phone calls, texting, and uh, data. Um, was the same for both companies. But Verizon was a little more expensive on the tablet monthly fee and also the cost of the tablet. So I would ask for permission to enter in a, a two-year agreement with AT&T FirstNet, um, which is as if something happens like a disaster, there's a side network for first responders uh, dedicated to use police, fire, ambulance, uh, towns and villages, highway departments. Um, so if it gets overwhelmed with people coming to the location, uh, the, the usual networks usually go down. Uh, so this uh, first net is supposed to be a first responders network. Uh, so it's, the idea is that it'll still run even though everybody else is uh, locked up and can't get a signal. Um, the five emails that were approved for the firehouse uh, firehouses last month have been uh, brought on board by Jamie and I programmed them. Um, <clears throat> those, those are going to be used for training um, once we can uh, get the... Uh, once we can get computers in the firehouses. Um, but on that, um, I'm asking the board, and it'll be a board decision, but I would recommend that we get a unique email address for each member. Um, that way they'll be you know, held under the guidelines of the email policy. Um, I, I think it would be hard to require members to use a personal email and hold them under our, our policy. Um, so I would recommend that each member of the department be given a eastchesterfd.com email address. Um, I don't have pricing for that. Jamie would have to get that. I think it was about $114 or $140 for each of the five email addresses Jamie arranged for me to get uh, for, the, uh, for the training. Um, also, uh, to mention, uh, retired Captain George Marinello passed away in the month of March, and uh, more recently, a retired firefighter Vincent Caparasso passed away um, in April. Um, so I would ask that the meeting be adjourned in their memory. I don't know if we do a moment of silence uh, on a conference call, so maybe we just uh, ask that the uh, meeting be adjourned in their memory. Um, and I just want to mention um, the, uh, the shops and the uh, commercial businesses in the area. The manager of the Value Drugs right across the street from the firehouse has been very helpful in us getting uh, cleaning supplies. He uh, took stuff right off the truck um, and reserved them for us, some Clorox wipes. He got us a dozen uh, things of that. We paid for them, but they're impossible to get right now, so it was great that he put them aside for us. Uh, he donated a box of 50 simple face masks, so when uh, you know people needed to go out in public, they could wear face masks. Uh, those are just straight donations from him, uh, the face mask. Uh, I want to say thank you to the manager, Will, at Value Drug. Uh, again, David Pope, I can't thank him enough for the ozone generator and the Generoso Pope Foundation. Uh, we've been using it, like I said, every four days to sanitize the rigs and the firehouses. Um, and also Broken Bow Brewery on Marbledale Road has provided us with uh, hand sanitizer. And um, they... It's, you know, the little spray bottles so the guys can put them in their pockets and also uh, larger bottles uh, so we can refill those spray bottles. So I want to say uh, thank you to uh, all the merchants, um, any of the pizza places and restaurants. Uh, Leewood Golf Club provided dinner for the members for all four groups. 
residents have been dropping off baked stuff, the bakeries. Um, the um, Bronx League of Women Voters provided dinner one night to all five firehouses. Um, that they coordinated with Mickey Spillane's. It was delivered. Uh, all the guys had to do was, uh, you know, they left them outside. The guys just had to bring them in. So I just want to thank you, all the support of the residents and the uh, commercial businesses, all the businesses that have been supporting the fire department and helping us uh, through this difficult time. So with that, if anybody has any questions or comments. Chief, let's try to figure out, if I can just go with this, Let's try to figure out what we're trying to do with these uh, authorizing you do on the computers, just so I can follow. So you want, I have the, there's this one proposal for for 10, 10 machines, and those are for the rigs and for, for, the, for the rigs, right? No, they are for, um, there would be two computers, two desktop computers going into each firehouse. One desktop computer would be at the watch desk for the members to use for training. Um, since we're not doing training where we're gathering together in one location, we could have the members log on to websites and uh, use them for training. The second computer would run the I am responding software um, that I don't even know if I mentioned that. Um, so the board has the proposal for that, the I am responding software. I would look at it has a possibility of doing a callback feature uh, for fires and things like that. So it would be a dedicated uh, computer. They would have a 32-inch uh, Samsung smart TV as a monitor, um, and the guys can use that. Um, I have one set up. I've been doing a two-week test trial or a two-month test trial, um, and I set uh, an old monitor up on the kitchen uh, desk. And it it when whenever a call comes in, within like 30 seconds of the tones going off. The call location pops up on the screen, the monitor, with the hydrants um, that are within a thousand feet of the house, and that's a setting. You can have all the hydrants come up, but the information takes a long time to populate, so I have it selected for only a thousand feet. So the two, the ten desktop computers, there's two different uh, screen sizes. One's a 32-inch smart TV that would be hooked up through an HDMI cable, and the second one is a regular 24-inch computer screen to do training on. So those would be the 10 computers. They, the, the computers that would go in the fire trucks would be the tablets that we I would propose that we get from AT&T. Okay, got it. So I don't have the AT&T invoice. I didn't print that. Um, but does any other board members have any comments just so we got this straight with the chief? So the chief is off. I, I, now I understand what he's asking for. Does everybody else understand what he's asking for? Okay, with me. With the again, our static. Okay, I understand what the chief is asking for. Do you guys understand? Does anybody have any questions or concerns that we we have authorized the chief to do this? No, I'm good. Are we just talking about the alert system, or are we talk about the computers right now? Right now, we're talking about the Dell purchases, and then we'll do the Dell purchases first, and then we'll talk about the um, notebooks for the rigs. I guess we can do both of those at the same time. Chief, and where are the new computers the going? is pretty minor, I think. That's just so the proposal that I sent to the board, there was one proposal for laptops. That was just for the board's edification. Some members of the board had asked for uh, laptops. Right. Um, so, so that's a separate quote. They're like $900. Yeah, the okay. That's what I'm so the other Dell was for 10 desktop computers at about $700 a piece. And... Um, Five 32-inch monitors that would run the IM responding software in the firehouse, and then five 24-inch monitors that would be for the computers at the watch desk for, so members could do training. So that would be 10 desktop computers, five small screen monitors, and five large screen monitors. Right. I have that quote in front of me here. It's $8,868.10 for the 10, 10 and 5. And then there's a separate quote behind that of uh, looks like one thousand fourteen dollars and five cents for the five uh, for the five monitors. They're two hundred and two hundred and two dollars and eighty one cents each. So I don't have any objections for us spending that the eight thousand and the one thousand, roughly nine thousand dollars, to accomplish what the chief's looking for for the Dells. Um, and then there he needs a standalone computer. 
for nine hundred dollars to operate in order to go with it. So roughly, it's about uh, ten thousand dollars of uh, of Dell equipment we're talking about. Is that correct, Chief? Um. Yeah. So I'm looking at the the quote I have is. 88.68 for the 10 computers and the 10 small monitors. Correct. And then I think it was about another $1,000, $1,014 for the uh, five 32-inch uh, smart TVs at. Correct. And then, and then you have the one uh, $968.44. What's that? That would only be if any of the commissioners wanted a laptop. So that I put that there. If the commissioners okay. want a laptop. And add one, two, three, four, or five laptops if any of the commissioners want them. As we're doing more and more of these webinar type meetings, I would imagine over the next few months. Okay, so let's just let me so we're not getting too uh, sidetracked. Let's. Um, I hope I don't take off time here. Let's. Um, let's. I'll make a motion that we we buy the eight thousand. We spend eight thousand eight hundred sixty eight dollars and ten cents. But I have a quick question, uh, Dennis. This is Commissioner Keating. So does it make sense to do that now while we're about to interview an IT person and see if just to hear from them, maybe they give us a little bit uh, further advice on it? I personally would hate to buy those and then have a, an IT manager turn around and say, yeah, we should have gotten these as opposed to those. I just don't know how far out we are with respect to an IT person, but it may make sense just to hold off for a little bit, just to have a little bit further discussion about The IT proposals we got, if you want to shift to the IT proposals, both of the IT guys we got have no Google certification in their, in their uh, proposals they gave us. And since we use Google for everything we do, and both guys are basically East Chester centric, they're not outside the East Chester loop. So um, I, I don't. I, I we don't. should probably. I uh, uh, respect it, but the one issue is I know they don't use Google, but then maybe they make a recommendation that we don't make that we don't use Google or use something else, and that would be why would we endeavor to do it immediately as opposed to waiting another maximum a month while we get. Because if you read the proposals, they want to come in and do a study for seven thousand dollars. The one guy. Hold on, Dennis. Dennis. First of all, the RFP was to set up a plan for us to actually have some kind of sense of what our IT should be. I mean, that's for sure. We do need to interview these people. Um, and Commissioner Keating's right. You know, if we wanted to make a concerted effort to make this more structured. We're going to possibly be shooting ourselves in the foot by right, right, jumping the gun right. and spending $10,000 on things that who knows if we even need to spend it. Now, I don't want to stand in the chief's way. That's not the point of it. But right. nor, I don't nor even do know where I. these computers I mean, are going. I asked, where are they going? Uh, we're getting them now, I guess, because of there being some kind of Windows 7 security issue. But up to this point, our security hasn't been that great anyway. So, I mean, uh, I have to... I have to agree with Commissioner Keating. I mean, it's worth the conversation. We can approve this uh, expenditure based upon having our interviews. Um, these RFPs, if you read them, they were for proposals. And, you know, we can talk about that more if you want, but only one of them actually went 100% with the RFP and gave us what we asked for. So, I mean, I, I that's where I stand. I, I, I agree with Commissioner Keating. I think he's right. I think we we got to break the wheel to the same cycle of saying we're going to do something and then not doing it and spending money somewhere else. And that's, I, I agree with him. We currently, I just, my, 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 we, my, less than uh, 5, my, we currently have very good security. We use Google for our, everything we do. Um, I mean, our security is not a problem. Our cost to run this fire department, we spend under $5,000 a year for Google drive. The town spent. Right. I feel like this well, is getting well, in the weeds. Let me let me just let me just to, interrupt for one second, please. Go into what we have or right. what we use. First of all, it's not ethically right. appropriate for us to be telling everyone what we use, so that they can mm -hmm. figure out a way if they wanted to to hammer into it. Secondly, we're talking about a Google certification 
that doesn't make or break anybody's RFP. We're asking for a plan on how to, and they may very well right, both say, right. you have a working system. Here's how we can make it better or more secure. I mean, they don't have Google certification. I mean, one of them has over a dozen different municipalities and fire districts they work for. So that to me is more important than Google certification. We can get somebody that, that, or they can that, that out was, somebody to do that. That was very inviting to see that somebody was working with a number of the other municipalities and had gotten good work back from those good word back from those municipalities for uh, the yeah. work that that one that that one uh, uh, proposal was doing. That was very nice to see. So, so Chief, yeah. I think what the board's saying is don't spend any time on IT and just forget about going deep down this road. It makes yeah, it crazy. to do training if we don't, like I can't ask guys to bring out their own laptops. I need something. If we just buy one computer for a firehouse then, what is the IT person going to say? Oh, you shouldn't have bought a computer. Regardless of if we hire an IT person, we still are going to need a computer for him to consider how we're going to use it. And I already know that we need to use it for training. We can do Zoom meetings or Google Meet, but we can't do training. We haven't done training in the last six weeks because we can't get together in large groups. So we need mm -hmm. computers to to facilitate the guys having training. And so where are the computers going? Them. There's what is do it two per firehouse? House? Is that what you're asking for? Ten computers, two going into each firehouse? Yes, that is correct. So what one was it at the house watch? I heard you say. Where was the second one going, Chief? It was going to be by placed by the maps. The large thirty-two inch screen would go on the apparatus floor next to like where the guys have the map, so they can see. It'll give them, you know, the address, location, the closest hydrants, the best route, all that kind of stuff. So in the firehouse, you know, as they're leaving for the call, getting dressed, they can look at the I am responding app on the thirty-two inch monitor. And get an idea where they go and where the fire, you know, where the closest uh, hydrants are. You can look at a paper mat, map, but you don't know where is the house in relationship to the block. If there's 20 houses on a block, you don't know if you're the first house on the corner or the last house up the street. And you look at a paper map. This will show them through Google Maps exactly where the house is located in the middle of the block, at the beginning of the block. So the second laptop would be running that program only. So the guys have a better idea of where they're going before they leave. All right. So, but, but, but and, and we all agree that that sounds like great technology to have people thinking even before they're out the door. Uh, my question, I think it, it, the same as Brian's and Stu's is if we're going to go forward with this RFP with information technology, which obviously we are, we have two respondents. Um, do we want to invite them into this, uh, conversation do they have anything to add chief that's the question that we have to ask ourselves would would these people that we're just uh, going to at some point either have a conference call like this with uh, and decide who, which of the two we're going to go with uh, and, and just have them give us an advisory on our technology our security our administration and, and we just want to make sure that uh your computers that you're you've scoped out which seems perfect for what you're trying to do is is right for it do you do you believe they have something that to your conversation or no and i guess is what i'm asking one of the vendors did a walkthrough with me about a month ago or six weeks ago um and so he, i explained to him exactly what i was doing we're going to have a computer in each firehouse for the guys to do training so i'm sure he took it into his consideration um, the other vendor, I think, did a, a walkthrough uh, probably sometime in 2019, uh, so he did not come back to take a look at our stuff. I think uh, when we were looking to upgrade the phones, they had done a walkthrough at that time. So he may not know, but one of the vendors was already, it was already explained to him exactly, you know, that we were planning for these computers and how they were going to be used. So it's, you know, it's, okay. it's, it's more of the, they're going to be running on I am responding software. And if we need to change some security settings to make them safer for the department, you know, that's fine. Uh, you know, we have to look into that. But, you know, I. Just, just out of curiosity, the, the software, will it be, will you be able to update with out of servant hydrants or uh, maybe if you had an invalid in the uh, one of the homes, you know, 
certain critical information, would that be able to show up on that 32-inch uh, screen? Yes, um, but the guys would have to stay there and, like, click on it, you know. Um, oh, I see. They don't have time. And then that. if they wanted to print it out, then we would have to get printers for all the, the, the computers. And, you know, so that would, be, that would delay their response as opposed to just looking at it, getting the location of the house, the hydrant. Um, and it can pop up because this same software is going to be running on the tablets in the rig. Um, so once the rig is started up and the tablets start up, they'll have that information. They can click on something to see if there's a pre-plan or if there's, uh, you know, a handicapped person or somebody on oxygen in that location. Uh, that gets a little more complicated because, you know, those things have to be updated on a fairly regular basis. You know, as people get older, um, you know, they may move to a nursing home and now you have information that's a year old or two years old and that person may no, no longer be in the house. So, we, you know, we would have to designate somebody to check on all those uh pre-plans or special situations uh, and follow up that, you know, may, if maybe every six months they call the resident to make sure that condition is still the same. Uh, Chief, uh, like I said, I, I'm not looking to hold you up at all. Uh, actually, uh, opposite of that, we'll try and get you everything that you need uh, as quickly as possible. So the, uh, the question I have, which is in line with what Stuart's talking about and not going into what we do have, and uh, whether we do, whether we are secure or not, I actually, if we're not looking at that, we don't know whether we are or we aren't. Um, so it still is a question. The what's the difference? How detrimental is it uh, if we hold off for you know another month until the next meeting, while we give ourselves a chance? this month to be able to talk to these two possible IT uh, entities, even just to ask them, them some very basic questions about what we'd like to do and uh, hear back from them to say, oh, those five computers, you know, it's not going to make a difference. So go out <laughs> and get your computers, whether I'm your guy or I'm not your guy. There's never, nobody's going to ever have a problem with you buying those five computers those five tablets. What's the, what's the, is it really detrimental to wait that month? And we haven't had them. We've been looking to get them for you and uh, it just buys us another 30 days to be able to speak with them and at least talk to them in a, uh, in a cursory uh, way. I, I mean, to I spoke to that. the person from Dell, the salesman that, got us Jamie's laptop that got us the four computers we recently bought and the two computers that we bought from for fire prevention in 2019. So, you know, I mean, these people are also experts and they recommend, you know, that they have security software. Uh, I, I know Commissioner Winter likes uh, Windows Defender. So, you know, we make sure those are running on all the computers. I don't see what's going to change in a month. These are just basic desktop computers for $700 a piece. I don't know what a IT director is going to say that's going to change just buying a basic desktop computer for $700. Nor, nor at, th at this point, nor do I. And so, like, I'm in agreement with uh, Commissioner Carlo. He says, let the professionals uh, answer those questions. Uh, it seems like there, we have two individuals or two companies that are the professionals on this makes sense to listen to those professionals. They may tell us something that we might not otherwise know, neither you nor me. And so the question is, what's the detriment? What's the, uh, what's detrimental about holding off the 30 days or the next, maybe it could be less than 30 days. Well, I, uh, who knows when we're going to meet again? I mean, it was, you know, March 7th was the last one. So it's been five weeks. If you would like to yeah. hold off on them, I'm fine with that. It's, you know, I, I made my suggestion. I don't know that these yeah, IT people are going to give us free information. So you're going to have to hire an IT person before they may say, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to look at your computer needs now and give you the information that you're in a month from now, you're going to be paying me to provide. So I, right. I, I then, get as then, more than right, one I more meeting. I see that you guys may have to have two or three more meetings before our IT professionals are hired. Or well, be able to provide this information, well, you know, do an analysis well, of what we have, and then provide, a, you know, a professional opinion. So right. I, I we can always make that. Months, not just like, 30 right. days. Well, so we're going to try. We're, we're going to try. We're, 
let's put aside the phone discussion for the commissioners who want phones. Set aside the laptop oh. discussion for the commissioners who want laptops. Uh, I agree. I think I, I think agree with that. It's really a waste of time to set it aside. But if you gentlemen want to set it aside, set it aside. The chiefs and the oh, I think I think he knows yeah. how to spec out a computer and we move on. No, it's Just not about them. that. It, it's not. Nobody's questioning. Listen, nobody's questioning the chief. We all love the chief. It has nothing to do. He's brighter. He's brighter than I am for sure. Uh, it's, it's about something else. It's about a professional doing it. And the chief uh, is a professional at uh, firefighting. So. Uh, it just comes down to if we're going to hire or potentially hire an IT manager, it makes sense just in the first instance to have a single simple conversation with both of them. But you, you knew this was out there for a month or two. Nobody had this discussion said to the chief, why don't you hold off? Because you're doing a pandemic, we're in a pandemic, you're trying to protect your men, you're trying to get them gowns. He's following the board direction. He does what we tell him to do. And now you're telling him, hey, by the way, we should have somebody analyze this. We should get a little more. No, and that's, that's, not, that's, that's not really what's happening. That's not really what's happening. Oh, but exactly. I, I, I've asked that question. I've asked that very simple question. What is the detriment to this? Is there any downside to this? Yes. Other than, no, I want to get them now. And I'm, I, 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 I personally I'm don't want to stand in the chief's way. I, I don't, I don't see any... I don't see how hardware is going to affect what we do forward with a with a consultant. Well, I agree, but I'm I'm in agreement with you, with you, Paul. But like you said last month, we should let the professionals. We're discussing the building and uh, the architect. Let the professionals have a discussion about it, as opposed to us. Oh well, no. And when, I'm it comes, when it comes I'm, to uh, the buildings and whatever Joe is doing, I agree. But I, again, I don't think whatever we do, we say we say we pick on one of these vendors to analyze our our network i don't think it's going to matter what we have as far as hardware so i, you know, I, I would be I, I would be more comfortable instead of well, I me mean, personally i would be more comfortable instead of you saying you think you don't think as opposed to being no knowing for sure so i'm going to leave it up to you guys i know where i i'm comfortable on this uh so dennis wants to take the uh, vote why don't why don't uh, we do just so. make an effort vote, right now to have have these interviews performed with these two vendors before May 15th and get back to the chief by then with a special I meeting. I for agree. That's all. Okay. I agree. It could be the, one the, of the vendors, let me, let me uh, one of the vendors, uh, Dennis, let me just, say, let me just say this. I agree. And in fact, uh, it's very sensible to do it. What you're saying is we can do this actually potentially in a week. So we may be able to get back even sooner than that, okay. depending upon the uh, has a business address in the of an apartment in New York City. He looks like a single guy, you know. That's one of the vendors. His date of incorporation happens to be eighteen months, about a thousand, about uh, a year after his date on his little bio here. Um, and the other one looks like he runs a reasonable business. So, and so that's. A, I think you should re-advertise. We went out for an RFP in the middle of a pandemic. We got two guys, both who do work for Eastchester, you know, emergency service people. No Google certification, and they're not from outside the community. I'm sure there are much more qualified people we can get. What do you mean, none outside the community? Both of these guys. One does work for EVAC. One does work for Town Hall. That's how we found them. Did you? But I don't understand what you're saying. You said none do out, none do service no, outside. No, we don't the have a vendor who's from New York City or from anywhere who does business. We have a guy who does business in one zero seven zero so nine. That's it. We didn't get so, anybody else responding because it's a pandemic. What do you? Okay. Do you think so? It what you're saying is you don't think there's been but enough. Let's response. move forward. Let's Excuse understand me. that I sent the RFP out to about 15 or so different locations. These are the ones that came back for a reason. Can you give us a list? Because of it's highly specialized to? work. So send the board yeah. the list of who you sent it to. Sure, I'd be more than happy to. Well, well why don't we move forward with, with setting up at least a meeting so that we can uh, discuss. Dennis, you seem to already made your decision. You, you One was more capable than the others. Uh, share one, your insight. Well, it was different. 
One guy had a more of a business model that looked like a business. The other guy talked the language in my language of more of the technology side of the business, which I kind of understand. The, the one guy had the, the technology part from his, from his letter more down. And the other guy was looked to me like a classic put a server in the closet. And putting a server in the closet is a really bad idea. You okay. need to use cloud-based software. Okay. So everybody's using it. Yeah, so let, let's not, I mean, that that's like, a, I think Stuart made a good point to not to go into that. Um, but let's just make, you know, we can talk to them. I think it makes sense to talk to them. Mm -hmm. Chief, nobody wants to hold you up. We just want to make sure we're not doing something twice. There's a, there's a potential for that. And just that's all we're looking for. So I agree, Brian. We have a nasty habit of make, of doing knee jerk purchases and decisions and then regretting them after. I think I know right, that it seems like we're ripping off right. the band aid by slowing down something as simple as a computer mm -hmm, purchase, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it's got to start mm -hmm. somewhere. Okay. Which one of the commissioners are going to take this ball and carry it and I will. Out the computers? Give I will. Give us a list of what Dell computers you're buying. Where that's that has nothing to do with problem? anything that we just discussed. What? That has nothing to do with what we discussed. What we, we discussed can't have was spend all this hold time on, Dennis. I just think that you're. I think that you're getting confused, and I understand that it, it's tough. I think what Mr. Keating was saying was not disparaging the chief's initiative or interest in purchasing <laughs> the computers. Rather, he's in support of it, and so am I. But I would rather do things in the chronological order, which is we made an effort to put out an RFP. We agreed to send it out. We got responses. Now let's sit down with them. One person provided us with a quote for an actual pricing of a plan. The other person gave us a quote of what they would do. So honestly, if we break them up into two phases, one gave us phase one, which is what we're looking for. The other gave us phase two, which Re re involves buying products. So if we can get phase one out of the way for both of them saying, what will you do to provide us with a plan? Then we can better understand what we're going to need to buy and what they're going to need to look at. And then if we need to make some purchases in the interim to cover what we need, that's a discussion we can have on by May 15th. I understand the chief's concern. I never want to stand in the way. And but quite honestly, us th these th these changeovers are for what, Chief? Because of the Windows Seven movement? No, this is uh, we we didn't really have computers in the firehouses other than a Chrome tablet right. at the uh, desk at headquarters. This is being done because right now we can't do training. Um, so that was number one. Number two was because when we sat down and did the budget, we talked about a technology upgrade and how we want to do more paperless things. Right now, every day, every fire truck does a check report and uh, on all the things on the rig. I wanted to do the type that's like a fillable PDF so that they can generate it as a PDF and submit it that way. Also, we want to be able to do run reports digitally. So this is to eliminate a lot of the paperwork that's currently being done in the firehouses. This is not uh, just to replace the uh, tab. The tablets are to replace the uh, Panasonic tough books that were in each fire truck. That's part of the AT and T first net of uh, getting new phones and tablets. That is to replace the Windows Seven uh, Panasonic tough book. This is to do something new that we put in the budget. Jamie can tell you. I think we put like twenty or thirty or forty grand in the budget for technology upgrades to do um, these computers, uh, so that we can get away from having so much paperwork. And also now they've come in handy because we can do webinar training and guys, you know, the captains could address everybody and uh, we could use these computers to do training through a uh, Google meet. Right. I hear you. I'll tell you where I am right now. I am still in the position where I would hold off on the desktops, but because they are important, I would say go forward with the tough book replacements and all the accoutrement related to that today and just push but I would like to know, uh, about the installation of the top, the the new uh, la uh, tablets into the rigs, has anyone spoken to Rushdown about that? Yeah, so I, I would have to get the docking stations, and Ruscon would do the non-pierce rigs, and then we would have the uh, 
the other company do the, the Pierce rigs, or they can have them, you know, temporarily, each of the new rigs, and, you know, they can have a place for them where they're not looking at them. Um, they have map folders, where, you know, they, where they have binders for, like, building pre-plans and stuff, and they're tethered down with a uh, nylon strap. So, you know, if it could be temporarily kept in there until we buy the docking station, uh, that would be my next step. So, but I have to know yeah, exactly what... what the docking stations go for? Uh, uh, I would say like $200 or so. And, then, and what about, and then does somebody install the docking station into the fire, into the apparatus? Yeah, like I said, Ruscon or Firematic Supply, who does the pierces, would put them in. But it was like the, uh, the radio chargers we just had put in. They'd probably be a couple hundred dollars per. Well, they were even more expensive than that. The radio charges, and, and we're talking about a $50 piece of equipment could cost $450 to install. Now we're talking about a $1,000 piece of equipment. So maybe we need to do some more investigation, ask Ruscon and, and Firematic uh, what their charges are and, and everything like that. Okay, we'll hold off on tablets, too. I'll, I'll get those quotes for you. All right, thank you. Um, even even if we just what about the cell team. phones? Are we moving forward with the replacement cell phones? Or are we going to hold off on those as well? The cell phones for the uh, lieutenants and, and captains and yourself. And fire prevention and myself, and if any of the commissioners wanted a department cell phone. I'm you know I think we should the commission can have them, and I'm happy to wait a month or two, whatever. Just to uh, particularly if we do move forward on an IT person, that that person says, no, use this phone, it's better, has greater security. Uh, these are easy to put something along those lines. So I'm happy to wait. Uh, I don't know about my colleague. Right. I think it's a good Chief, idea to wait Samsung? on that too. You can get an Apple XR or a Samsung or a Kia Serra. There's different models, different pricing. Right. Uh, the only thing is with AT&T, for the month of April, they have a $100 discount on the tablet. So instead of mm -hmm. $899, I think they're $799 or whatever I sent you in a quote. Right. I can get that exact number. That will probably expire by the next meeting. And also right. the phones right now, they have a, it's, I think the phones are actually like $0.99. Cents, so they may go up to like $149 or so. Every month, they, they can't tell you what next month's specials are going to be. So the April specials will expire, and then the May specials will come in. They may get cheaper. They may get more expensive, although, the, like I said, the phones for uh, AT&T were only $0.99, cents, so they're not going to get much cheaper. Right. Tablets could. We could lose the $100 per tablet, so that'll be $700 or $800 of discount if that program expires. So, Chief, let me ask you something. Going back to what we were talking about um, regarding COVID and FEMA, we do have an opportunity for some kind of reimbursement if we provide information that we're buying equipment based upon COVID that we're using for that. So no, they would only do it for uh, equipment that we use directly on COVID calls. So since we would use the tablets and phones for other calls, it would be a very small percentage that we could get reimbursed. We would have to show how, how often we use them on COVID calls. And most of the times they're sitting idle in the uh, fire trucks, and then when we go on a call for 45 minutes, we could attribute that 45 minutes. So it's it's not really a direct expense to COVID. It's something that we're replacing the Panasonic Toughbooks on. Right, but the computers, if we're using any kind of material now for training versus before because of cure COVID, couldn't we be reimbursed at least partially for that? Um, again, I, I tried to see if we could put extra staffing on and get reimbursed to cover Lawrence Hospital. No, for you their, can't do that. No, you can't you do that. Exactly. Reimburse sick time for people who are out with COVID that you call in, not for other than that. That all goes out of operating. Exactly. So, so for all the technology equipment, since it was in the budget to replace all the technology this year, I don't know. You know, uh, we can apply. We can apply for anything, but it's going to take time and effort. And I don't know the. Uh, you know what well, here's what I'm thinking. Of, uh, isn't well, there a that way we will prove? Isn't there you know, a way we can put in grants for everything, um, but it's there you know, there's cost to, to that. And to uh, of, uh, split the baby, so to speak, so that we can get what we need at a responsible price. I mean, there are inexpensive, there has to be inexpensive items on state contracts, smaller laptops that we can get only for the reason of training that we can then try and get those reimbursed through FEMA because we'd be buying them specifically for that. 
I don't think we want to game FEMA during the crisis. We're not it's gaming not FEMA. Like what we're doing. We're, you know, we're, we're, we have to make alterations to our day to day because of COVID, which means the federal government is able to reimburse us for those expenditures. We wouldn't be buying stuff for training right now. Yes, upgrading computers, but 10 of them for training, we wouldn't be doing that. We were planning to do it long before this. The chief wanted them in the houses anyway. We were buying computer. We never had a conversation. We were going to buy computers so that people can train. Mm -hmm. Where it's a byproduct of the circumstances, right? Mm -hmm. Well, no, the uh, all the OSHA training is done online. We, you know, we were going to use them partially for training. We were, you know, the technology upgrade part of it was Windows Seven was expiring, and only five of them would be used for training. The other five desktops would going to be used to run the I am responding software with the larger monitor on the apparatus floors. So five of them may be eligible uh, if they say that yes, that's an approved uh, use. Okay, so Great. can we call the computers for now, or can we move on? Well, I, I would like to conclude with what Stu volunteered to do, which is set up a, a teleconferencing interviewing with the two uh, guys that responded to the uh, RFP about information sure. technology. I'll uh, reach out to them and see their availability and circle back to you guys and see who wants to be uh, on, the, on the panel. And if we have to do it as part of a regular meeting or schedule it as a workshop regular meeting, then we'll do it. And if everybody wants to be there, that's fine. All right, thanks, Joe. Okay. Yeah, thank you. you. Have the generator renewal contract. Does anybody object to us hiring, uh, renewing the contract for the generator you're servicing? What was the cost, Dennis? Yeah, put it on the record. I'm asking if you you guys have all got the email. It was like twenty six hundred dollars. I remember. Let me look. I understand, Dennis, but we need to record it for the meeting. No kidding. I got it right here. No kidding. The sheet. Okay. I was wrong by $35. Okay. Gen Services is looking to roll over, roll over with us a service contract for our uh, for five generators at a unit cost of uh, 510, 510, 515, 515. So uh, for a total of $2,565 for annual maintenance, I'll make a motion that we renew that service agreement. I'll second, Raven. Okay. Anybody else? Everybody say aye. 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 Okay. aye. aye. All right. We, there was a question about, you had a question about um, the washer dryers we're going to hold off for now, Chief. Is that the idea? Uh, yeah, Timmy's got to get that third quote for the uh, electrical. And if you don't feel comfortable having contractors in the firehouses, we'll just hold off uh, until next I month. That way, Tim could get the I third quote for the electrical for the washers. Okay. Now, there was some question, and I just want the chief was concerned, and I just want this to get out there because I, I, it's the chief was concerned that later in the year, we're going to need to move money to the overtime budget. And the reason why we have to do that is we have the captain and two firefighters slots that are open right now. And we have budgeted $500,000 for overtime. The number uh, that Jamie estimates is close to $720,000 we'll be spending. Of that money, it pretty much equals the captain and two firefighters. So it's really no change. It's just a line item thing. The chief does not want to have to close fire companies in anticipation of this. So we uh, don't want to get to September and realize we have to do this. Somebody's got their mic moving around. No, I don't think it's me. So he wants to make sure that he doesn't need to close companies now to plan ahead for the pandemic because he has some feedback that the board is not going to move this money, that there's some you know, opinion out there that we're not going to fund overtime in the fall past the scheduled amount. Has there been any agreement not to move money at the end of the year? I don't think we had, I don't think we brought it up in the public at all. Well, that's what I'm bringing it up. Yeah, I don't think that, I don't, are we there yet? This, isn't this something no, we can do in a month or two? Or for, that, nope. They're doing a great job. When we when we need to do it, why don't we just uh, deal with it then and just continue on with the business that we need for today? 
Because what happens is you have to anticipate when the vacation calendar is going to kick in. That's between July, August, September. So the chief doesn't want, if he was going to, if he knew the budget was $500,000, now in the rest of the year, he would close fire companies now. He doesn't want I think it's a, I think it's nervous. crazy to close a firehouse, but um, I'm, I'm okay with uh, letting this go for another month and we can address it then. I don't know about everybody else. Well, we just saw the numbers. The numbers don't look that bad. Uh, Jamie yeah. just sent the budget numbers for the first quarter, and, and uh, we have six hundred forty thousand dollars in, in the overtime line. And I think we we've definitely used less than a hundred thousand of it. So, so well, things yeah. aren't really that bad. We have nice job, hundred thousand dollars in the overtime line. Say and that again. The overtime line is five hundred thousand dollars. Uh, well, what I looked at today from Jamie's report, she can correct me. I thought it said six hundred forty thousand. But but anyhow, and, and what she what we had been using, I think, was like seventy thousand. Jamie, you want to say something? Yeah, sure. Um, we have five hundred thousand for like general overtime. We have ninety thousand for training, so specific for the training days, and then the other fifty thousand is to cover the sick leave incentive. So we do have six hundred and forty thousand dollars in total, um, but the hundred and forty over the five hundred is specifically dedicated to the training and the sick leave incentive. Okay, so so remember. Um, but I, I I I agree with Brian and what Jamie just reported. We we have plenty of time uh, to to discuss this. Uh, I think to correct it somewhat. We should talk about how we're going to move forward. Oh, did the captain's list ever come in, Jamie? Yes, it did. I have both lists. So captain and lieutenant's list both came in. Yeah. So, so we really should utilize those two lists before the 60 days expire. And we have to ask Jamie to call for, for two more lists. And, and that'll do, that'll do a, a, a great help also to containing the overtime. I mean, especially since we're running without the fifth captain and there's going to be a captain on vacation probably every week of the summer. Uh, can I just catch up? How much have we spent in overtime so far this year? We have that number? So about? far, it's just about 100000 So we have $400,000 sitting in the account right now. That's correct. We've transferred money, budget transfers with money way less than that, haven't we? Sitting in the account? Yes. yes. I'm not saying transfer money right now. I'm not offering to transfer money. I'm saying is the chief was led to believe the board is going to resist moving money. And I just want to clear that up. What does that mean? That problem. The chief, the, I, I don't know what that means. Well, I'm just repeating what I hear. Okay. Well, well, we set a budget. We should expect our manager to hold to the budget, if that's what you're saying, Dennis. Yeah, COVID not excluding, obviously. We know there's no, something going on with he this. He can't hold to the budget if there's two, uh, two firemen and a captain and they're covering that in overtime. Exactly. But so we're short sure that because you guys didn't want to hire. But it's the same amount of money whether you bring it on overtime or pay them. It's a budget line. Okay, thing. we're flip-flopping here. First, it's the good thing that we don't have them working, and now it's we're, it's a depth no, to us that no. we don't have them. Gentlemen, I mean, uh, may, may, may gentlemen, I, may I, can we, just, can we just, I think it makes good sense to start to look at promoting a captain and potentially a lieutenant, but for now we don't need to move the money. We can have this conversation later. It doesn't, you know, we're not uh, holding back on the chief, but there's just no reason to do it right now. Whatever rumors you've heard, just let's move on for the business for today, please. So are we going to set up interviews for captain? I think we should. I believe so, too. I would just like the Take chief to make a recommendation. I'll follow his recommendation. I'd like to interview them. Does chief? anybody else want to interview them? I, I, I understand that interviews happened initially, but since I'm going to be part of uh, potentially promoting somebody, I personally would like to have a conversation. I think it's with important, them. Brian, that if you haven't sat in on an interview of somebody and we hire them, that you should be involved. Otherwise, 
you you should you know i think it's not unfair to you and to to all the other candidates that you vote without meeting them yourself i think it's fair that yeah no i'm not i don't want to hold yeah. anything up and particularly no. if it can help the district but you know as long as it doesn't yeah but, now that we're doing this online there's a possibility we could just do the absolute bare minimum as far as noticing and interview people very quickly now that we don't have to assemble are you going to yeah, interview them I, online? I, or are you going to interview them in person? We'll interview them more online. Let's, Why not? Let's, well, how about this, Dennis? It might be may, even may a nice uh, question for them to see if they're all amenable, all the candidates, to being interviewed via the uh, uh, web. Yeah, I don't think anybody would find it as a detriment that they would be. Uh, they might even be more comfortable than sitting in a room with us. Right. That's right. Right. Yeah. Right. And, uh, Chief, what do you think? What's your thoughts about bringing in a captain? Are you for that? As far as promoting, I'm always, you know, yeah. in favor of promoting and filling every position, uh, whether it's, you know, a firefighter, a lieutenant, or a captain. As far as meeting in person, I think the only way you're going to do it right now is through a meeting like this on Google Meet. Yeah. I don't think you're going to get, you know, anytime soon where you're going to sit in a room with the candidates. I think it. I think so. You, so you're supportive of doing a promotion? Yes, definitely. Okay. And chief, can I, Stu? I just want to ask him a quick question. Chief, yeah. do you do you feel that it would be problematic to have them do it? This is a would be a follow up to obviously the first interview. Um, everybody's been interviewed, right? All the potential candidates. No. No, there's uh, there's one or two new one for captain, and there's one new candidate for lieutenant. Okay. All right, go so go over to captain first, chief. When was the who Bruce Calby was the last captain promoted? Yes, that is correct. And so, who, what was the competition at that time? We'll probably do better off doing that offline. O okay. Yeah. I will hold off on that. I, I think the only Thank question you. I have, I. Yeah, it's, it, the the one thing I would just say is as long chief as long as that new candidate doesn't feel like he or she would be put uh, is, has some you know uh, loss so to speak of uh, of an opportunity to uh, um, interview in person you know maybe we can start off with or uh, finish up with it uh, via the web. We may it may turn around in you know three weeks from now and we find out that you know we can all get back to uh, you know s some normalcy. I'm not saying uh, normalcy. We know there's uh, real problems out there, but maybe some normalcy. Maybe uh, you know we can all you know meet in a space that's a much bigger space. Uh, there's five of us or seven of us, and I don't know how many uh, potential candidates in a big open space and have those conversations as a as a final or something like that. But minimally, we can at least start. And you don't object to it? Okay. No, I don't object to it at all. If if you want to meet in person, we can use one of the meeting rooms and you know have people proper distancing. Uh, if you want to do it by webinar, I'm fine with that as well. It'll give the candidates an opportunity to show their technology skills. Right. right. I, I, I was very, uh, I'm sorry, Jamie. I love, I I love that, that you know, We should have Jamie do us. The, Jamie has a treasurer's report. I don't know if she's given a full report. Um, I guess we're going to interview a captain. Well, she can set yeah, well, let's set a time. Or, or who's going to contact the captains and set this up? We, we Otherwise, Jamie, it'll be a month. Jamie, Jamie has to send a letter to all of them or communicate with all of them that the position's available, the promotion's available, and get a response back and then send up a meeting. Now, they've been more relaxed about that at Westchester County, but Jamie can detail it. Yes, they, they actually they have become much more relaxed about it just in general. Um, so now you are allowed to reach out via email. They changed the notification period from 10 days uh, 10 business days to just 10 days. Um, and again, with the promotions, they've always been a little bit less, um, uh, I guess, rigorous than when you're looking to uh, bring in new hires. So, I mean, in reality, if the board didn't want to interview and they just already knew who they wanted, 
you'd be fine to just reach out to that person and hire them. So it really is, you have a lot of uh, wiggle room here um, in the promotion. So what we've done historically um, is we would send the canvas letter to the top either three or I believe one of the list has four candidates because there's a tie. No, I guess it's three in either. Um, or, and we just, we just send them the letter and then we can schedule, you know, via email or however else. Um, there's not a lot of formality for the promotion process. Jamie, there are four on the list for captain because there's a tie for first and there's a tie for second. So there's two okay. for first place, two for second place. Got it. That makes sense. I think I thought I remembered that. So if if the board wants, I can go ahead and issue the canvas letters to those uh, the four for uh, captain and the three for lieutenant. Um, just I don't know if the best what the best way to do it is. If you want me to send them via mail or if you want the chief to hand them out or how you know I don't have email addresses for everybody since we don't have email. Uh, Keith, is it possible for you if, if you're not uh, averse to this, even uh, getting those email addresses to of them, and then we'll figure out how else we can uh, make sure that everybody's appropriately notified. Yeah, I can do that. Or if Jamie wants to send me the letters, I can print them and you know put them in envelopes and hand deliver them to the guys. I don't know that any of them are on vacation right now, so when they're working, I could, you know, make sure they get the letters. I could hand deliver them when they're working. Right, right. And or if you want, I'll ask to give their emails. Um, if the board wants resumes, we can ask them to submit resumes with, you know, an email on that. Uh, sub however mm -hmm. you want to handle it, I'm open to it. Yeah, you okay. could as simply Great. as you have the chief pick up the phone and call them and say, we want to interview for the position on this date at this time bring your resume and then when they show up we can hand them the canvas letter for them to sign off on it it can be you know as simple as that's, that that's but perfect. We, you know i'll that's certainly perfect. get the letters prepared and one thing the, the membership when they in for promotions they generally go to staples or something and have these elaborate books printed i wouldn't encourage that right now they don't need to go to staples and go to printers and it's just it's safer to stay at home you know what i'm saying i, I that's one of the risks yeah you know, I agree with you, Dennis. Yeah, Maybe they should just yeah. email us what they have. Yeah, right. So, right. And Dennis is right. Maybe we can just get them to email it to us as long as nobody feels like everyone feels like they're all getting the, the right opportunity, you know, an equal opportunity. Nobody can be held against them that they couldn't produce a uh, beautifully looking uh, resume because of, you know, lack of being able to go to uh, even a professional on something like that where they otherwise might do that. So, I agree. And uh, if we can get it done by email, and the chief, chief would be definitely great to be to I think have a get a verbal from someone that they know about it. They've had the proper notice and uh, the proper opportunity to react to it. And, and are we going to do these in person, or are we going to try to do them by Google's uh, like we're doing here? Uh, I I think we try, you know. Like here in the Google. Yeah, I think like in, here. Will work. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and, I don't. And, have, and quite frankly, only <coughs> Stu and Dennis has been involved in in any captain's promotion. Myself, uh, Paul, and, and Brian have not been. So it's kind of all new for all of us. Uh, so it will be fair. I, I mean, I, I appreciate Brian being considered. If did someone think that they were at a disadvantage because they didn't get an in-person interview when other people did? But but the fact that the majority is the majority of us have not ever interviewed any of the uh, prospective captains. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Good idea. Okay, so payment of bills. Jamie gave us a list of bills to pay. Uh, well, well, oh, are we gonna are we gonna put like a, a response date on this canvas letter to the captains to the to the captain candidates? Jamie handles that. She'll give it. Well, well, were we going to try to accomplish the uh, interviews the first or second week of May? Maybe. I think Tom is. I think Tom is just trying to entertain your question about trying to be prepared about the overtime. So I'm assuming that if we do that expeditiously, we can we can make sure we can sort of fight against any potential uh, captain overtime. 
So that's that's the that's why we we're talking about that, Tom, to get it done expeditiously. Right, and I just wanted yeah. to finish yeah. it. We seem to be moving on before we actually uh, clarified what was going to be done and who was going to do it and what were the dates. Well, Jamie sends out, Jamie creates a letter, gives it to the chief. The chief mails it out. She, as soon as she gets it turned around, we'll pick a date. She can tell us a date. Yeah, you. The, I mean, the letter is required to give them 10 days to reply. Um, but again, usually with the promotions, they're going to reply immediately. Um, it's usually not the case that someone doesn't want to be considered for the promotion. So, um, I mean, I can get the letters out. I can get the letters to the chief probably tomorrow, and then it would have to have 10 days. But you can, as you start getting replies, you can schedule the interviews. You don't have to wait. But either way, I think that would bring you to that first or second week of May you're talking about. So Thank that you, would be that also, that reasonable. You could, right. You could probably even ask the, the, can, the potential candidate to even just waive probably the 10 days, right? If everybody says, yes, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Let's do this. Oh, you sure. may be able to yeah. get that. Yeah, you may be able to get that from them. Just and to, what, in terms we, of, yeah. what would we thinking? We'd have one day for for all of us to get together and, and give each candidate fifteen minutes or ten minutes, whatever it is. Like so, assign them four four o'clock, four fifteen, and I'm just making up times. Uh, four thirty. We, we could probably iron that out later, Tom, and, okay. and definitely give everybody. Yeah, I think we could do that. Definitely makes sense. Because we really don't want to have them all, like we have, I have 10 people there. The chief said there might be extra uh, people on phone and on computer, but but we don't know who's mm -hmm. on here. It's a public meeting. I, I obviously would have to have a closed type of version of this for the interviews. Yes. Okay. And, and, and yeah. you're, you're pretty uh, no, happy. We, with we, they can dial directly. They can dial directly in each of them and... And then to, uh, like Dennis has set up today, and uh, that should be simple enough. Um, if I'm able to, Jamie, uh, ask publicly, how many candidates do we have? It would be four for captain and three for lieutenant. Okay. There you go. The captain, 15 minutes each, 20 minutes each, and banging it out in an hour. Generally, we do 15 minute interviews. That's generally how yeah, it works. So you could do it in an hour and get it over, you know, the turning on and off. And uh, you could probably uh, accomplish that in no longer than an hour and a half time and, and do it relatively quickly and get someone in there for the chief. Okay. Oh, one other thing before I pay the bills. I think, I think we have the Jamie's going to send the, the Jamie will, will get us a date expeditiously and we move on. Um, Good, Chief. Your your I am reporting software is about to run out. Even though you don't have the computers, don't you want the board to authorize you to buy that so you don't have to uh, let it run out and lose your um, effort? Yeah, the uh, the two month trial ends tomorrow. So if I you know renew it tomorrow and sign on for the eight hundred and I think it was sixty dollars um, a year. Uh, that would be good. That way I don't have to lose all the hydrants that we imported and, you know, the members that I created, like those five new emails. Uh, mm -hmm. That would be good. And we could just do it for a one-year trial and see how it works out. Okay. Well, I would make a motion. We let the chief do that. Anybody want to second it? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So, chief, roll that over. Um, all right. Thank you. That. And, Jamie, on your bills, we have three sets of warrants and one credit card bill. The first warrant is $209,346.45. Second warrant is $96,823.87. And then $213,480.36. Credit card bills of $1,903.72 for a total of $521,554.40. Five I make a motion we pay those bills. Any discussion? I have one question, not really a discussion. Paul pointed out that, that and, and Jamie confirmed that it, it was just uh, the old secretary treasurer's name involved, but the amount of the bill didn't coincide with the amount that, that we paid in that warrant. In other words, did that yeah. bill not get paid? 
No, the the bill the bill gets paid. It's it's the way it's the timing of when they run their bills versus when we submit our payment. So basically our payment of last month's invoice is always in transit and hasn't been received yet by the time they send us the next bill. Um, it's because of their, the way their billing cycle coincides with our meeting schedule. So the, the bill that you see for the, um, the NYSHA bill it will always include the charges from last month as well in their total. And that's why I go through and um, make sure like we're only paying for the current month. So you, the, the whole like first probably 75% of the first page of the bill relates to last month, which has already been paid, but it doesn't get reflected yet in that total. So the amount you see us paying on the bill is the current amount due for this month. Thank you, Jamie. You're okay. welcome. And, and that's the reason that the bills seem higher this month is because you're seeing two um, NYSHA bills, again, just having to do with the timing of this meeting. The last couple of months, we were meeting much earlier in the month. So that's why you're seeing you know, $500,000 worth of bills instead of more like two, 250, 300,000. So I need a second. Who would like to second the bill? Second. So sure. Okay. So Commissioner Roach, are you Hi. Commissioner Keating? Aye. Commissioner Raven? Aye. I'll say aye and Commissioner Carlo. Aye. Okay, so we paid the bill. Um, the, we had a communication. We have the, after this call, we're going to get together with the architect on the second call or the engineer and to talk about Chester Heights. But in the meanwhile, I got a request. Chester Heights Community Association would like an update if we're going to fix the second floor of that building or so they could get to use it as a meeting of public assembly. So I think we need to start. Who so asked that question? The Chester Heights Community Association. Okay. We, it, you didn't come in clearly. Okay. So I don't know why. Um, I'm using a very old laptop. Maybe that's why. Um, we're we're going to so, get you a laptop. I don't want to laugh. <laughs> uh, so basically, we need to make it. We need to figure out how to make the second floor accessible so the community can use that room. It may be possible to put a chairlift in there. That's a really wide stairwell. So I almost think we should engage someone now to figure out how to make the second floor accessible and the stairwell. Uh, it could be our existing architect. But we have to decide what we're doing for the second floor because after this floor goes in, people are going to want to use that building and we have to solve the um, second means of egress and we have to solve the accessibility. Well, I don't disagree with you, Dennis. I think that uh, I, I would be reluctant to speak uh, to any architect and especially Joe and Mike uh, prior to getting phase three up and running. Uh, what you're talking about is definitely phase four, and, and it's down the line, but w we tried to do this in the springtime when we added project after project, and all it ended up doing was blowing it down. So, so I would rather talk more about uh, the current, you know, like you say, we're a half hour late for our talk with him already. Uh, you know, I think we should be concentrating on what's been written down already. I could not review it very well. My Chromebook did not give me very good access uh, to that material. So I feel very uncomfortable and, and feel that I need to uh, sit down or, or at least see a, a, a printed copy of what Joe's and Mike's plans are for phase three. And, and let's- yeah, it's, hard to read. it's hard to read. Even I am, I'm, I'm in my summer house and the computer here is not as, good as my other computers, and uh, it's very difficult to read those screens, those, those printouts. So we really need to get uh, printed out copies into each commissioner's hands, possibly, even if we have to spend the, the 100 bucks to do that so that we can actually, uh, and, and I understand what you're saying and what the community association is saying and that they're dealing with you, but but that's, uh, that is definitely putting the cart before the horse. Let, let's get the floor and this portion done, let's get it so that we can actually read the plans before we vote on them uh, and, and move this forward. 
and, and then I'm more than happy to entertain the next phase. Okay. Um, all right. Any, I don't think there's anything else in this meeting besides board member comments. Any board member comments? Well, I uh, want to thank the East Chester Fire Department and the Chief for the outstanding work uh, they've done and, and the risk that they've taken. Uh, usually they're, uh, well, fire can be a hit, hidden enemy also, but, but this uh, past two months, they've been definitely fighting the hidden enemy and, and the stress that, and the strain that people must be putting on their lives at work and at home must have been tremendous. So I thank them so much uh, for all their efforts to the community. Uh, I agree with all that. Um, anybody else with board member comments? No, we all do. They've been unbelievable. They've been really great. And uh, not only are they doing it, but they're doing it without uh, getting themselves sick, which is truly unbelievable. It's unbelievable. So, Chief, membership, thank you so much. And you're right, Brian, that takes great uh, discipline to make sure you put on that protective gear every run, uh, whether it's obvious or not, because like you said, it's a hidden enemy. It's almost an impossibility. And you should, you should keep in mind, and this is what's important, is that there's one building where we've had almost 20 runs to that building, a senior citizen center, in the last uh, six weeks. And when the membership goes there, they have to gound up. And it takes, uh, if you look at your daily lunch together, the chief membership is spending sometimes an hour at a scene that should be normally a 15 minute scene. So the membership is not uh, able to turn around for a fire scene. So, um, you know, that's important. The other thing is, somebody. The other thing we got to keep notice is this virus is not over. I mean, the media will make you believe that we're on the down slope and things are better. But the number of people in New York, great in New York, who are walking around or within the 14 day cycle is about 100,000. So we are at almost the highest point we've been in people who are within 14 days of getting the virus. Just a reference point, on March 1st, on March 31st, there were 71,000 people in that 14-day window. Now there's 101,000. On March 20th, there were 9,000 people. So we're like 10 times greater than March 20th. So do not let your guard down. If you're a person who is, you know, overweight, if you're um, above the age of 60, if you are any of that risk category, diabetes, do not let your guard down right now. If, you know, maintain your isolation. And that's what I have to say. And Chief, if you can remind us who we lost this month. And uh, we also remember, you know, we lost Glenn Belito and, uh, and Jim Kenny, Kenny from Bronxville, who were both wonderful people. Yes, Commissioner, it was retired Captain George Marinello and retired firefighter Vincent Caparasso, who passed away in the last month. And we also had a technician that serviced our equipment that passed away. Yeah, Don Owens of ESS, a longtime uh, technician that did most of our radio repairs and installation. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away as well. So we should remember those folks. It's, uh, it's just brutal. This is just an unbelievably bad time. Okay, so gentlemen, uh, motion to close the meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll actually, we'll adjourn it together to the other, click on, click on your other link. Okay? And we'll join back on again. Thank you.
Thank mm-hmm. you. 